Republican National Convention. And um, the very nature that uh, we're here at these talks and um, the fact that I'm worried as soon as I step outside of this room, there's going to be a bunch of men in black suits uh, for questions for me is an indication that something needs to be done about it. <laughs> Let's see you around, sir. Um, all right, so uh, we're going to start with um, an introduction to civil disobedience. Um, not black hat or white hat. Uh, as opposed to black hat hatting uh, mindless destruction or white hat hacking uh, the mindless uh, protection of the status quo and protecting corporations, we believe that hacking is a tool. It's a means to an end. Unlike uh, mindless black hatting or status quo white hat hacking, we believe that hacking could be used as a practical application of network and security skills or sec security skills as a means of fighting for social justice by putting direct pressure on politicians and institutions. It is a legitimate act of online protest, uh, and we would like to use all mediums, whether it be on the street actions, smashing windows, holding signs, or using the internet uh, in nonviolent disruption, uh, and we believe it to be a time-tested and necessary act of democracy to continue the democratic process and keep the people on top. It is uh, not cyber terrorism as um, certain federal agencies would like to believe. Um, there's actually been very little documented cases of cyber terrorism, uh, although the uh, Homeland Security's budget would like to indicate that their priorities are all screwed up. Uh, it differs from cyber terrorism the fact that terrorism tries to put fear into the population, and hacktivism would rather unite people and bring people together and empower people to uh, give them the ability that together we can make a difference and we can uh, put people on top of unjust corporations and governments. Why electronic civil disobedience? Well, especially over the past few years um, with the Bush administration, we've witnessed a multi-pronged attack on humanity on all fronts, whether it be the madness of the war on terrorism, carpet bombing villages, uh, the cowardice act of sending cruise missiles and shock and awe, or uh, domestic attacks on our civil liberties at home, the Patriot Act, tapping phones, uh, Office of Homeland Security, total information awareness. It's obvious that something needs to be done about it, and it's going to get a lot worse before it gets a lot better. And we can't trust politicians and capitalists to solve these problems because politicians and capitalists themselves are the problem. We're not going to be able to win this thing by voting for Kerry or by voting for Bush or by using any sort of electoral means to do so because if anyone catches the, uh, the hack the vote election, I mean, it's, it's a joke. I mean, they've already started. There's already been documented cases of voter irregularity, documented cases of voter fraud. It's very direct. Um, if we're gonna, able to ever win this thing, we're going to have to do it outside of the realm of mere electoral politics, which is not to say don't vote, but don't just vote. Okay. History shows that change has to be made by the people coming from below, and we believe that the Internet is a powerful new medium where just a handful of people um, in small groups, just by shifting data around in the right directions, can make big changes and big damage or creation, or depending on which side of the law you are on. Okay. Um, a history of electronic civil disobedience. It's been around for a while, um, but uh, there's been a group called the Electronic Disturbance Theory, uh, which uh, designed uh, flood net scripts uh, to be used as a form of electronic sit-in. Unlike a normal sit-in where uh, people either like occupy buildings or campus buildings or federal buildings or they lock arms in front of intersections to uh, physically disrupt the system uh, when uh, the madness of law is working towards acts of injustice, uh, electronic uh, civil disobedience or electronic sit-in is um, usually a series of scripts uh, that are um, deployed on a website and they set a target date and time where people uh, would uh, visit the website and they download these tools and it would continuously bombard uh, a selected targets with traffic, usually over port 80, to physically shut down the website. Now this differs from uh, typical DDoS attacks in the fact that instead of one person like uh, infecting systems or um, just bombarding them themselves. This is more of a legitimate act in the fact that it encourages everyone to individually use their own computers as kind of like a mass online action. It is a legitimate protest act. Um, and uh, the Electronic Disturbance Theater uh, used these scripts in solidarity with the uh, Zapatistas, the, uh, the anarchist collectives of uh, Chiapas, Mexico. Um, and uh, this type of attack or this type of action um, is still in use today. Uh, another group called the Electro Hippie Collective uh, deployed these scripts uh, the day after the Iraq War started. They set up a, a series of scripts on their website to uh, bombard the Pentagon with uh, so much traffic that it was able to shut it down for a few days. 
Um, and unlike the Electronic Disturbance Theater, they actually prepared these scripts and put them on their website so people could actually download the code, modify the code just a bit, and use it to launch their own actions in the future. Um, so far, what I've only talked about like electronic sit-in scripts. Uh, there's also um, a large and growing number of hacker organizations and individuals who are um, doing more direct methods of disruption, whether it be uh, actually infiltrating and defacing websites or uh, gathering private information or using corporate credit cards to purchase like symbolic items of political significance. Um, one example of such is the Crime Think Hackers block, um, which uh, defaced uh, Dare's website about uh, last February, uh, the drug-free, anti-drug propaganda thing. Um, they uh, put a large message to oppose the war on drugs and to oppose the uh, uh, criminalization of marijuana. And uh, unlike typical defacement attacks, um, this is very targeted against a specific unjust institution. And they didn't just put some lame uh, script kitty, oh, I'm so cool, check it out, I defaced this website, I was here. They uh, put serious, there are serious political foundations to this, and they released press releases and made a big media splash. And even though it was only up for a couple hours, a lot of people went to it and a lot of people understood the politics surrounding it, and um, no damage was done. And it was a legitimate protest tactic, and we'd hope to see a lot more in the future. And over the past couple of years, there's been a lot more as the uh, where oppression breeds resistance. There's been a lot more um, politically motivated defacements. <clears throat> uh, and then since then, there's been um, a large variety of uh, hacker magazines uh, or hacktivist magazines that have uh, increasingly uh, talked about electronic civil disobedience. Uh, Thehacktivist.com is a very good resource uh, for talking about the latest news in the hacktivist scene, whether it be um, uh, unjust computer laws in China or whether it be actions such as the uh, electronic civil disobedience campaign against the Republican National Convention. There's also a magazine um, on hackthissite.org that uh, talks mainly about the latest uh, campaigns on electronic civil disobedience, and they cover a lot of really good stuff like uh, the debold voting systems and so forth. Um, so what does this all mean? Um, <laughs> I guess so. I don't know. This isn't in my computer. I don't use Windows. <clears throat> um, so open source is applied anarchism. Um, there are, so the Republican National Convention. Um, I don't think I need to tell you about the horrors of the Republican Party or the horrors of the Democratic Party, for that matter. Um, but uh, it just should, I guess. the Republican National Convention is being held in New York City around September 11th in a very low, pathetic attempt to capitalize off of the fears and emotions surrounding 9-11. They want to use the city as a tactic to push forth their political agenda of endless war and um, giving corporations tax breaks and legal breaks so they could push forth their capitalist agenda of domineering the world at uh, the poor's expense. Um, hundreds of thousands will be descending upon the city to take their frustrations um, on the Bush administration uh, to the streets. Um, and various organizations have pledged to use direct action to shut down the convention, whether it be um, the cliche smashing windows, uh, spray painting Starbucks windows, or um, a wide array of diverse uh, creative direct action techniques. Um, such as changing the LCD displays on Madison Square Garden and so forth. Um, in addition to the battle on the streets, um, several uh, hacker organizations and individuals have pledged to commit um, electronic civil disobedience against um, the Republican National Convention, uh, a variety of right-wing websites, conservative websites, large multinational corporations, uh, and other key elements of the military-industrial complex. Unlike uh, past electronic civil disobedience actions, um, where there's only been like one in institution who's participated in these protests, um, we are calling out uh, for various people who might be interested or might be vaguely interested in this sort of thing to autonomously commit their own direct action against whatever targets they feel. Um, and what we're doing is we're serving as kind of a focus point, a coordinating organization. We're not directly going to be participating in any illegal acts ourselves, but we're going to be communicating with the media about different actions different people are going to be doing, and uh, we're going to hopefully try to coordinate different people's actions. This is a very decentralized campaign. There are no central groups to give orders or to organize this campaign. All are free to participate in any way they can, and that means every one of you in the audience right now. Do your own thing. We only exist to communicate with the media and coordinate actions amongst groups. Um, what is planned or encouraged or make up your mind. Um, we're going to be doing, um, is essentially this is going to be a two-step attack. Um, a week before the national convention, which is around, the convention takes place from August 28th or so to September 2nd. 
um, a week before, or on August 22nd, um, there's going to be a series of direct disruptions of Republican right-wing websites. And I'll let you use your imagination. There's going to be a series of defacements, financial disruption, uh, email flood campaigns. Um, and this is basically to stir discussion of the Republican National Convention in the media um, and hopefully get the word out about the demonstrations and encourage people to take the bus from their local city and actually engage in the demonstrations against the Republican National Convention in uh, New York City. Um, we are also going to be um, announcing and preparing for preparing for um, the electronic sit-in scripts and other electronic flooding systems that is going to be taking place um, the day of the convention, August 29th. So a week before and then the day of August 29th. Uh, and the electronic sit-in scripts will be composed of a typical electronic sit-in script where people could use the flood tools that will be available on our website, and I'll show you that later on. Um, and we'll also be giving um, email lists of all the key um, Republican Party contacts, whether it be fax numbers, email addresses, phone numbers, and we're just going to put them on the website, and everyone is free to do with whatever it is they want. You know, we have a couple suggestions, but we won't be directly doing anything ourselves. One thing we'd like to see is... Uh, People like faxing together black sheets of construction paper, like tied together in a big loop to these like key Republican like fax numbers, so they get bombarded by hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of like black sheets. Um, we would like to see uh, a variety of mail bombings, um, and there would be a, a list of Republican National Convention delegates available on our website later on. Um, and in addition, there's lists of all the Republican National Convention delegates who are coming from each state. We know where they're going to be staying in the hotels. We know what Broadway shows they're going to be going to. All this information is going to be available on the website, and we'd like to encourage people to harass these fuckers in any way they can. <laughs> okay. Now, anyone is, has the ability to engage in their own electronic civil disobedience campaigns. All we're doing is we're just trying to coordinate different people doing different things. So if, you wanna, if you're talk, targeting uh, Sarah Lee, for example, for um, exploited workers, now is a good time to do it because it's all part of the same capitalist infrastructure. If you've got your eye on Boeing, yeah, please go for it. I'd, I'd like to see those fuckers go down. Um, same with Halliburton, Bechtel, Total Information Awareness. Use your imagination. I have a list of websites, and they will be available on the, the website. Um, basically, um, you can either select your targets specifically, or you could um, broadly sweep for targets and look for anything that might be right-wing or conservative. Um, specifically, stuff that may already be in the news or may already be in the hot seat, um, such as uh, Google going corporate uh, like a week ago. There's been a, a variety of different attacks um, to bring light to how they uh, support uh, China's oppressive internet laws. Um, that's a, a very good tactic for disruption, especially when you like DDoS uh, their website on the day that they go public. That's a very good technique of uh, disrupting the corporate infrastructure. Um, then the next step is to gather contact information for different national news services and different hacker organizations or different um, you know magazines or so forth. Gather a big email list. Just go on a big campaign. Just get mega stoned out of your mind and just go look at all these websites and gather email lists and get a big huge list. I know I did. Good website to get free email is ziplip.com. It's very it's secure and use several proxies and don't use your home computer when you do it. There's also several remailers if you if you really concerned about security. Um, declare your attack time and date uh, before you actually go and do it. Uh, say when you're going to be doing it, why you're going to be doing it, and prepare a very well worded press release. I suggest you look up like a there's a good book called Making the News. Uh, it's a guide for activists and how to like bring about their campaigns. Um, hold your questions till the end. I'd really like to. De debate this. So, uh, so the, I'd usually give it a couple days before I actually go and do these actions, and then like send your press releases out to various national news services, and give them like a secure email address where they could get in contact with you, because they love to uh, do background things and uh, ask questions and so forth. Uh, and that would be very good for your cause if you get like interviewed by national news services, and it would give you an opportunity to kind of present yourself to the media. Um, basically. The real end of this is we like to see people get involved, get politically motivated, and start hacking for political foundations instead of just mindless games and uh, ego battles. Um, don't limit your activism to just the mere world of computers. Take it to the streets. We need more foot soldiers in the streets to fuck up shit. All right? There's many ways you can get involved with the RNC. We'd like to see every method of disruption possible, whether it be shutting down the power to Madison Square Garden, whether it be defacing... 10,000 different Republican websites. We'd like to see everything. We'd like to see 
uh, RNC delegates get harassed on the streets, fuck them up. You run away. There's the charter buses that they're going to be going up and down 7th Street. There's ways you can shut them down. There's uh, the little emergency switch on the side. They're going to be clearly labeled for the Republican National Convention. Get a team of two or three people to go shut it down, and it'll completely cause disruption. Sneak into the RNC. Become a volunteer. Um, there's different ways you could volunteer for the RNC. Uh, just go to the RNC's website and become a volunteer. And then in the middle of the, the uh, convention itself, cause all sorts of disruption. Get silly string, get light shows, start screaming, megaphone. Don't tell them to fuck shit up. <clears throat> Free country, democracy. No, well, it is, just please. Yes, ma'am. Um, and you know, basically that's all I gotta say. So, I mean, this is, this is an open forum. We'd like to see everyone participate in this in any way they can. So I'm gonna just open this up for questions or debate. So anyone got anything to say? We'll start with this guy over here. Okay, I could give you a couple of few specifics right offhand. He asked about um, a few specifics of criteria for what you consider to be unjust corporations and unjust government institutions. Uh, I guess one off the bat that is on everyone's mind would be Halliburton. Um, and I don't think I really need to talk about this, but um, basically, uh, former uh, CEO uh, Dick Cheney is now vice president. Halliburton uh, has contracts with the uh, Department uh, of Army Engineers uh, to privatize the Iraqis' uh, oil supplies. Uh, and Dwight Eisenhower said it himself uh, that uh, when the people who make money from war, whether it be by privatizing uh, the nation's resources or by building the bombs or by the reconstruction efforts, if it's these same corporations, these private American corporations are the same ones who are making the decisions whether we are going to war or not, then we're going to be going to war a lot and there's going to be a lot of rich motherfuckers making a lot of money. Yeah, Eisenhower said that. Yep, Eisenhower. Military industrial complex. It's uh, right out there in your face. Uh, Bechtel, Rumsfeld, um, SBC monopolizing the phone systems. Um, I could just prattle on and on. So um, I hope that answered your question. And any any real corporation that exploits the masses or uh, uh, contributes to the war machine uh, by whether bombing uh, third world countries or by cutting down on workers' benefits uh, and essentially. Stealing from the poor and giving to the rich is fair game as far as I'm concerned. All right, over there. Okay, I got 10 minutes left. Um, okay, I believe that was in reference to uh, CDC, who I believe was originally the ones who coined the term um, hacktivismo. And um, I guess it really depends on who gets to define the terms and who owns these ideas. Um, when I say hacktivism, I really mean the merging of activism and hacking, and using hacking as a means of fighting for social justice. Um, I agree on that as well. But um, DDoSing is not hacking, but it is a method of disruption. and. I, I can't stand idly by while these motherfuckers are able to get away with it. So any method of disruption at any cost, any means necessary. It goes both ways. Um, while at the same time, um, the actions by the anti-war movement might um, alienate uh, or uh, give the other side, the uh, rich motherfuckers, the ability to um, use it against us by portraying us all as destructive, mindless ha uh, anarchists and so forth, uh, I think it goes a bit both ways. While at the same time, it really beat the fuck out of a lot of people in Chicago in 68, it did radicalize a lot of different people, and it really exposed um, how reactionary and how inherently violent the police state really is. Um, and there's just an example of that. If you looked at um, the uh, Daily News a couple of weeks ago in New York, they're uh, trying to portray anarchists as uh, hardcore lunatics. And in the article, they're talking about how they contain these hardcore anarchists that is by uh, shooting them with rubber bullets, gassing them, chemical weapons, um, shooting people. They, uh, they killed uh, 
I don't remember his name, uh, a guy in Genoa, Italy, at a G8 demonstration. All right, I'm going to hurry it up because these guys look pretty antsy. Cool. Um, that lady over there with the pink shirt. One man's freedom fighter is another man's terrorist. Um, anyone who uh, is, especially in our modern police state times, who is even the least bit of uh, criticism of uh, the American government uh, could easily be portrayed as terrorists. Or, uh, and we've especially seen that. Uh, you're either with us or you're against us. Um, and I see that as a sign that if we don't speak up now, we may never have another chance to. So let them call us terrorists. I'll still bomb their buildings. Please do. Ladies, ladies and gentlemen, I need to interrupt for a second. Uh, it came to my attention that some words were said by the speakers involving acts of violence, acts of vandalism, acts of what I'm sure they term uh, social anarchistic dis disobedience. Uh, the staff of DEF CON, DEF CON itself, uh, and the individuals within DEF CON do not condone uh, those activities and do not associate ourselves with those activities. I would also like to point out, from a law enforcement point of view, uh, if you do do that, you will be considered a terrorist. You will be prosecuted under those laws. Do I agree with that? I'm a strict constitutionalist, uh, which means that, to me, the, the First Amendment is sacrosanct, the Fourth Amendment is sacrosanct, the Fifth Amendment is sacrosanct. <clears throat> Have I seen a deterioration in those rights in the interest of freedom? I'd just like to say that, how do you boil a frog? Well, you turn up the water slowly until the frog can't jump out. I'm sure these guys would agree with that. I would encourage you to be active politically, and I would encourage you to be active politically responsibly. Okay? That, as you say, your right stop at the front of another man's nose, and you do have the right to speak your mind in this country, but do it responsibly. Don't do it stupidly. Don't blow things up. Don't shoot people. Don't crash systems, because that can kill people. There was, there was an anarchist event that went on, I can't remember way back when, they broke into a hospital, and they wiped a whole bunch of hospital records. Medications were given to wrong patients, patients died. That's not activism, that's murder. I don't remember the, the gang, it was back in the 60s, who robbed the bank where the guard was killed. Thank you, the weatherman. Once again, that was supposed to be political activism. It wasn't. It was simple terrorism and murder. It was, not terror. it was terrorism and murder. They blew up. They blew up. Uh, what did they blow up? They were on a bank. Did they blow something up them? That's all I think. I'm mixing my metaphors. Sorry, guys, I had to come up and say that. Just you were, you were a little off the edge. We don't want to share the news. Doesn't suddenly go, and at DEF CON, they said to blow up the Republican bus. And Please do. So on and so forth. So thanks, guys. There's a difference between um, terrorism and electronic civil disobedience and the fact that this does not cause damage to people or individuals or any sort of infrastructural damage. This is simply just the shifting of data around in the right directions that could be used to make political points. And we, act, we ask people to be responsible in their actions. These delegates are responsible for the deaths of 10,000 people in Iraq. Silence is complicity. If you, if you protect these delegates... All right, we aren't going to have a shouting match. If we have more questions, more questions.
Okay, I'm going to uh, bring up a historical context here. When the machinery of law is working towards acts of injustice, then it's tough for the people to rise up and combat the law and build a free society. An example of this is the people of uh, the American revolutionaries who shot up the pigs at Lexington and Concord would be accused of being a terrorist by the, in the eyes of the British government. They were freedom fighters, man. It's about democracy. It's about taking back your own country from the oppressors. Any questions? Excuse me, we have one at a time. By any means necessary. I guess that's it. <laughs>